In this episode, I'll reveal why you don't have to cut carbs to lose weight. You just need to do three things and you'll flick on a switch in your body that will naturally make you healthier and lose weight. So let's find out what these three things are and how this all works. The key to losing weight and keeping it off, having more energy and living a long, healthy life is not to avoid fats and carbs or eat probiotic rich foods. It is to know how to turn on a specific switch in your body that helps you flush out unnecessary calories. This switch is called caloric diversion and by activating this, you will dramatically improve your health and easily maintain an ideal healthy weight at whatever age you are. By activating this one key thing, you will dramatically improve your health, digestion, have stronger joints and muscles, a smoother skin tone, and in general, kickstart your journey to a longer, happier and healthier life. Please remember to hit the subscribe and like button as that shows me you like my videos and want to learn more. But first, before I reveal how to flick this caloric diversion switch on, let me introduce myself. My name is Gabrielle Amies and I'm a renowned Australian intermittent fasting coach. I have spent the best part of my life studying natural health and medicine and have recently this year returned from five months in India and Sri Lanka, where I studied with some of the country's top Ayurvedic doctors and yogi masters at some of the country's leading ashrams and health and yoga retreats. So let me share my knowledge with you and show you how to unlock this caloric diversion switch and reveal a stronger, healthier and more slimmer you. So this caloric diversion switch stops your body absorbing unnecessary calories and simply flushes them out. You need to incorporate two types of food into your diet to flick this switch on. And by incorporating these two fat blasting foods into your diet, you will not only shed loads of unwanted pounds, you'll feel amazing and you won't have to cut carbs out of your diet. So the first thing to incorporate is polyphenols. So what are polyphenols? Polyphenols are a micronutrient found in many plant-based foods. Although polyphenols are available in supplement form, it's best to consume them in natural foods. There are over 8,000 types of polyphenols. Today in this episode, I am going to tell you the four main categories and which foods have the highest level of polyphenols. So the first category is flavonoids. These are found in colorful fruits, vegetables, tea, and wine. The second category is phenolic acids, and these are found in the seeds, skins, and leaves of fruits and vegetables. The third is lignans, and these are found in whole grains, nuts, and seeds. And the fourth category is still beans, and these are abundant in peanuts, grapes, and berries. Over the last decade, polyphenols have attracted a lot of interest. Research suggests that they have several health benefits, including supporting a healthy heart. According to a 2018 review, a diet rich in polyphenols may help protect you from chronic health conditions, including certain cancers, heart disease, type two diabetes, and neurodegenerative diseases. Polyphenols are antioxidants, and these can protect cells from damage caused by free radicals. Polyphenols are anti-inflammatories. They have anti-inflammatory properties that may help prevent many chronic conditions. Polyphenols are neuroprotective. The antioxidant effects of polyphenols may protect against neurological diseases such as dementia and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Polyphenols are good for insulin sensitivity as they may help control blood sugar levels, improve insulin sensitivity, and lower the risk of developing type two diabetes. In addition, 
Polyphenols are good for heart health. Several studies have shown that a diet high in polyphenols may reduce the risk of coronary heart disease. Polyphenols are also good for your gut bacteria. Many scientists and health experts believe that they contribute to gut health by promoting the growth of beneficial gut bacteria or inhibiting bad gut bacteria. So which are the best foods to eat? In the berry category, the berry with the highest levels of polyphenols is a black choke berry, which is native to Eastern North America. And this has over 1,700 milligrams of polyphenols per 100 grams. But as most of us have never heard of this berry, I'll now recommend some more common berries that are high in polyphenols. And these include elderberries with 1,191 milligrams per 100 grams, black currants with 560 milligrams per 100 grams, blueberries with 525 milligrams per 100 grams, blackberries with 248 milligrams per 100 grams, strawberries have 225 milligrams per 100 grams and raspberries 126 milligrams per 100 grams. It's really important to note here that most of the polyphenols in fruit are mainly present in the skin. Therefore, if you like juicing your fruit, make sure you include the skin because if you don't, you'll lose much of its polyphenol content. Cocoa powder contains 3,448 milligrams of polyphenols per 100 grams. However, not all chocolate boosts your polyphenols in the same way and there is a big difference between milk and dark chocolate. Dark chocolate contains 1,664 milligrams per 100 grams, while milk chocolate only contains 236 milligrams per 100 grams. It's a grams. really good idea to check the cocoa content of the chocolate you're buying and choose a good quality, preferably organic dark chocolate with 70% or greater cocoa content for the highest levels of polyphenols. Another thing to incorporate in your diet is black coffee and black tea. I've gone on in many of my videos how black coffee really helps your gut health in your mitochondria and how it also helps you sustain an intermittent fast. The minute you start adding milk, soy, almond or oat milk and sugar, it actually negates the health benefits of drinking coffee and black tea. Not to mention adding too much of these products actually stops you being in a fast. So try and wean yourself off the milk and the sugar and drink your tea and coffee black. As well as helping gut health and helping you fast, you'll also be pleased to know that there are polyphenols in both tea and coffee. In filter coffee, there's 240 milligrams per 100 mils. In black tea, 102 milligrams, and in green tea, 89 milligrams. So it's a little bit of a myth that green tea has the highest health benefits. It's actually filtered black coffee. It's also important to note that the storage and roasting process of coffee beans does affect the polyphenol content. In an article published in 2019 in the European Food Research and Technology showed that organic coffee beans have a higher polyphenol content than conventional ones. Also, when coffee beans are stored, polyphenol levels decrease over time. I always store my coffee beans in the freezer to help sustain the polyphenol levels. The intensity of the roasting process also plays a part. Fresh, light roasted beans seem to have a higher polyphenol content than medium roasted beans. Isn't that an interesting fact? Another way to get polyphenols is in spices as they have high levels of polyphenols per gram. But because we only use small amounts, they provide fewer polyphenols overall. For instance, you're unlikely to eat 100 grams of one spice in one day. So which spices have the highest polyphenol levels? Cloves are the start with 15,188 milligrams per 100 grams. Star anise is 5,460 and curry powder 285. Turmeric also contains a polyphenol called curcumin. Studies show that the total 
polyphenol content of curcumin is about 2,213 milligrams per 100 grams, which is actually quite high. However, turmeric only contains about 2 to 5% curcumin, so you won't get a big amount when adding turmeric to your meal. So if you want to take turmeric, take it in a supplement, because this is the best way to get the highest doses of turmeric in one go. Curcumin is also difficult for your body to absorb and only a tiny amount of what you consume reaches your bloodstream. So make sure if you are adding turmeric to your meals or you're taking it as a supplement that you activate it with black pepper or choose a supplement that has added black pepper as piperine enhances curcumin absorption in the body by up to a staggering 2,000%. So combining these spices magnifies their effects. Another great source of polyphenols are nuts and seeds as they are naturally high in polyphenols. The top five for polyphenol content are flaxseed with 1,528 per milligram, chestnuts 1,215, hazelnuts, 495 milligrams, pecan nuts 493 milligrams and almonds 187. So to put this into some type of context, a serving size of 10 chestnuts weighs approximately 84 grams. So if you want to have uh, 1,250 milligrams of polyphenols, you'd need to eat about 13 chestnuts. Another way to get polyphenols into your diet is with wine. And alcohol is not obviously the healthiest beverage of choice, but some alcoholic drinks may provide health benefits in moderation. And this is because red wine is primarily made by using the skin of the grapes. And because of this, it has a much higher polyphenol content than other wines. So red wine tops the list with 101 milligrams per 100 mils. Rosé is only 10 milligrams and white wine also has only 10 milligrams. So if you're going to drink wine, go for a red because it's far more healthier with the polyphenol content and it also just happens to be my favorite. Some other ways to get polyphenols into your diet is by eating olives and having olive oil as these are naturally rich in polyphenols. Black olives have the highest content of polyphenols with 569 milligrams per 100 grams. Green olives have 346 milligrams and extra virgin olive oil has 62 milligrams per 100 mils. Beans also include polyphenols. Black beans have 59 milligrams and white beans 51 milligrams. Vegetables generally have fewer polyphenols than fruit. Some have more than others. Here are the top five vegetables with the highest polyphenol contents. The top ones are globe artichokes with 260 milligrams. Red chicory is next at 235. Red onion has 168 and green chicory has 166 milligrams per 100 grams with spinach last at 119 milligrams per 100 grams. So they're basically the top vegetables if you wanna get polyphenols. But as I said, generally, Vegetables have fewer polyphenols than their fruit that I've mentioned before that has the highest levels. The very latest research shows that the more of these polyphenols you eat, the healthier you become and the less chance you'll have of developing heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's and dementia, Parkinson's disease and blood sugar related disorders. Polyphenols also keep your cholesterol in a healthy range and improve your gut health. So no more constipation, flatulence and bloating. If this isn't enough reason to incorporate polyphenols in your diet, studies have also shown they help you lose weight. But the most amazing thing about polyphenols is that they are one of the things that help activate the caloric diversion I've been talking about as polyphenols act as a signaling molecule that tells your mitochondria in your gut not to store excess calories as fat, but to flush them out of your body. 
This leads to far less fat being stored and therefore you lose weight and have better health. And now we'll move on to the second thing that you need to incorporate into your diet that helps activate caloric diversion. And these are called ketones. And surprisingly, this is an even more powerful signaling molecule than polyphenols to activate the caloric diversion. Ketones are a special compound made in your liver and making this ketones in the liver is called ketosis, which is the basis of the no carb keto diet where you cut out all carbs, forcing your body to convert fat for energy. When your body converts its fat to energy, it produces ketones and ketones help you lose weight. One of the most surprising things I'm going to reveal to you in this episode is that studies at America's top clinics, such as the Mayo and Cleveland clinics, show that virtually nobody on a keto diet actually goes into ketosis, even when they totally cut out all carbs. So they are actually not breaking down or burning any fat in their fat cells. They are not producing any ketones at all. And they are simply depriving themselves of carbs for absolutely no reason. And even worse, they are losing healthy muscle, not fat. And as soon as they start eating carbs again, they gain even more weight, usually in the hip size, bellies and butt, as fat comes back a lot faster than the muscle mass they've lost. So this is a good reason never to go on the keto diet. You're literally depriving yourself of all the nice things and then end up putting on weight. So who on earth would wanna do that? So now I'm going to reveal a far easier way to make ketones in your body and go into ketosis without cutting out a single carb. And that's right, you do not need to cut out any carbs to go into ketosis. So the way your body can naturally produce ketones is by fasting for at least 12 hours between meals as in the absence of food, your body naturally starts making ketones for energy and switches into a state of caloric diversion. Studies time and time again have shown that it doesn't matter what you eat, it's when you eat. In a recent control study group of men and women that spanned over a two month period, the men and women that ate three balanced meals per day lost far less weight than the group who fasted and ate whatever they wanted within a controlled eating window of once per day. The group that ate whatever they wanted, burgers, fries, you name it, in this controlled eating window once per day, lost on average an incredible 4.1% of their body weight. Simply by intermittent fasting, studies done on mice because they have the most similar DNA to humans also show that mice that are fed only in a restricted eating window have three times the lifespan of mice that are allowed to eat whatever they want, whenever they want. Fasting creates ketones and ketones cause caloric diversion, which helps all your cells work together and melts fat off your body. So intermittent fasting isn't just about losing weight. In one of my last videos on the incredible benefits of intermittent fasting on neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, studies on mice prove how fasting not only increases lifespan, but also significantly aids in human disease and in brain health. I'll make sure I put a link of that fascinating video at the end of this video for you to watch. And now I'm going to tell you the second way for your body to make ketones in the liver without cutting carbs and without fasting. It's MCTs. MCT means medium chain triglycerides, which is a kind of fat found in certain foods, but astoundingly MCTs can never be converted to fat in your body. They go straight to your liver and get converted to ketones. And this is the only compound they can be converted to. MCTs can only become ketones. And as we now know, ketones activate caloric diversion. 
Assay acts as a signal molecule that tells your mitochondria in your gut not to store excess calories as fat, but to flush them out of your body. And studies show the more MCTs you eat, the more ketones you're producing, and the more weight you will lose from around your waist and fat around your organs. So what foods are high in MCTs? Coconut oil is a number one source of MCTs and contains the highest concentration of MCTs in any other food. Goat's cheese and sheep milk also naturally contain MCTs. So what does this all mean? It means if we do these three things, we eat foods high in polyphenols, such as dark berries, red and black currants, olive oil, nut and certain vegetables. We intermittent fast at least 12 plus hours per day and consume foods high in MCTs, such as coconut oil, sheep's milk and goat's cheese, we will be guaranteed that we're activating and supercharging caloric diversion. And as we now know, caloric diversion will ensure all excess pounds are shed and you stay slim and maintain optimum brain, heart and digestive health. The good news is, is you can now buy MCT oil at most leading supermarkets and health stores, which makes switching to caloric diversion so much easier. So as a quick summary, eating foods high in polyphenols and MCTs combined with intermittent fasting, switch your body into caloric diversion, flushing excess calories out of your body instead of storing them as fat, and it helps your cells work better together. This will keep you trim, give you increased energy, Less unhealthy food cravings make you feel young, healthy and stronger, have better bowel movements, sharper mind with no brain fog and thus ultimately fast tracking you, ensuring you live a longer, happier and healthier life. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye from me, Gabrielle Amis, your intermittent fasting coach and mentor. Go, go.